Welcome back, Life With Us TV, your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, this video <laughs> is for the first time cruiser. Are you looking to book a cruise or have booked a cruise? And now you're sitting here like, I'm just overwhelmed. I'm excited, I'm nervous, but at the same time, I'm inundated with a whole bunch of information that's kind of, kind of foreign to you, right? So on today's video, we're going to give you the top 20 things that a first time cruiser should be aware of and that they should know. Let's go ahead and get into this video. The first thing a first time cruiser needs to know that those deals and prices that you see on Carnival website, like $2.99 or $3.99 for a cruise, those are base prices. Those are not the total cost because those costs do not include the port fees or the taxes. So we want you to be aware of that when you're trying to do your budget for your cruise. So after you go in and book your cruise and hit submit, that will be your total cost. The second thing, what's not included in the cruise fare. So we have our total price. We've already booked, as my husband said, you've gotten your base fare, taxes, port fees, all of that. So now you have your true cost of what your cruise is. So now what's not included in that? First thing is excursions are not included. That is an add on. So is specialty dining. When mm -hmm. we say specialty dining, we're talking about places like they have a steakhouse on most ships. Some of them have an Italian restaurant on the ships. Some of them have bonsai sushi, things like that. Some of those things cost extra, but there are plenty yeah. of things that are inclusive with your cruise price, but those are some of the upcharge things. Gratuities, the gratuities are not included. That is something that you have to add on as well. Right. I'm not gonna list all the things that are not included. I'm going to leave a link below in the description field and in the pinned comments of a list that we have on our website that tells you everything that's not included. It's easier to see what's not included because there's so many things that is yes. included. Trust me, you'll be okay. Yeah. The third thing you should know as a first time cruiser that when you go on the countable ship, they use what they call a sale and sign card, which is a cashless system for your convenience while you're on board. So you don't have to use any cash to make any purchases. And how that works is you will add either your credit card, your debit card or cash to it. Now, as far as the debit card, we recommend you not to use it because they like to put holes on it. So like, for example, they could put a hundred dollar hold on the first day. And so the next day you start that day you start to spend or the next day you start to spend, they will start to authorize more holes. So for example, like say for instance, day one, they authorize a hundred dollars and then day two, you spent 200 and then they decide to authorize another hundred. That's actually $400 that's on hold on your card. And here's the bucked up part about it, <laughs> that most of the time those holes don't fall off your debit cards about a couple of weeks after you get off the cruise, man. Yeah, so cash so that, or credit card. Yeah, so we recommend cash or the credit card so you don't have to worry about that, man. Also, it acts as your access to your room and for you to get on and off the ship. Fourth thing, luggage restrictions. Let's talk about it. They do have a policy where the luggage cannot be more than 50 pounds. So if you're flying in, that's <laughs> not gonna be a problem right. anyway. You're already meeting the restrictions before <laughs> right. you got there. The luggage cannot exceed 16 inches in height and 24 inches in width. And what we're gonna do is we're going to explain because there's a different way to measure it because you probably say, well, wait a minute. <laughs> what does that mean? So what you do is you lay your luggage down flat on a bed or on a floor and you begin to measure. As you can see right here, we are measuring and you can actually see 16 inches in height is this way when you go by how they're telling you to measure your luggage. Then also 24 inches wide. They don't care the length of the luggage right. because basically they just wanna make sure that your luggage can fit through the security thing. Also, the luggage must be unlocked. They need to be able to get in there. If they detect any liquids or anything like that, they're definitely gonna go in and they're yeah. gonna shake around, shift your things <laughs> around because they wanna make sure you ain't smuggling your yeah, rum runners or your lava <laughs> on board. <laughs> All right, the fifth thing, man, that you need to know as a first time cruiser is that when you go in the dining room, there is no limit mm -hmm. to what you can order. Cause I remember on our first cruise, 
we thought you can only get one entree, one side, your drink, whatever. And after you finish that, it's done. It's done. But nah, you can order as many lobsters as you want, as many steaks as you want, burgers, whatever is on the menu. You can order the whole goddamn menu if you want. That's it. So if you see steak over here, <laughs> yeah. prime rib, and you see that they have shrimp, you can get them both. Yep. And no one's going to look at you funny. Nah. So uh, enjoy. Boom. The sixth thing, let's talk about carry on. Yeah, man. We're not talking about a carry on for a flight. We're talking about a carry on for the cruise. And it varies from differently than if you were going on a flight because you can bring liquids onto this one, big ones at that. What I mean by that is you are able to bring one bottle of wine per legal adult in the cabin up to two bottles. Yes. Example, me and him in a cabin together, he can have one um, 750 milliliter, I can have one 750 milliliter. If we were sharing a room with another 21 year old, they can't oh, yeah, have they it. Out. Like, you <laughs> can't have it. But with that said, you have to take that onto the ship with you inside of your carry-on. What is the carry-on that you can take? You can take a duffel bag, you can take a beach bag. It doesn't really matter. We take backpacks because yeah. it's easy just to sling it on your back and go on about your business. Also, make sure that your travel document yeah, man. and your boarding pass is in that carry-on. Do not make the mistake I have seen many people do. Yeah. They will put their stuff in that little pocket in the front of their big suitcase in that luggage. The porter will grab that and it's it's gone. Yeah. It's almost impossible to get that back. How are you getting on the ship now? So do not make that mistake. Make sure your travel documents are on you. Boarding pass. Yes. Your birth certificate. If you're traveling with a birth certificate, make sure you have that and your government issued ID. If you're traveling with a passport, make sure that that is in the carry-on along with your government issued ID. Can't stress that enough as well to put in there because you just don't know when your check luggage is gonna show up at your cabin. Make sure that you're prepared for the day. Make sure any medications that you need are on you. A phone charger. Yeah, You yeah. don't know. <laughs> You've been traveling all day probably. You probably owe 20%. <laughs> you in the red just praying to God that Check your charger with you so that you don't have them kind of problems. Also, if you want to go and get in the pool, you have to have that on you at that moment. You want to get out the travel clothes? Do that as well. Just prepare yourself for the day in your carry-on. The seventh thing first-time cruisers need to know is that when you're in port, do not, I absolutely repeat, do not use your debit card. Mm -hmm. Please use cash only. Because you do not want nobody in port having access to your debit card. So please don't do that. All. all right, the eighth thing, hot topic. Hot topic. Hot topic. <laughs> Prepaid gratuities versus gratuities versus tipping in cash. Let's talk, talk about, about it. it. As a travel agent, I get this all the time. Shameless plug. I'll have my information linked down below. But what I do is when I price out a cruise, I include the prepaid gratuities. Of course, you can opt not to. But the beauty of having prepaid gratuities paid before your cruise is these tips go to the proper people. And it's yes. split up and it's taken care of before you even board the cruise. Another question. So if I prepay my gratuities, will I get charged again for gratuities at the end of my cruise? No, nope. it is taken care of. Yep. Next thing. What if I don't want to prepay my gratuities? What happens then? If you decide, okay, I don't want to prepay my gratuities. I just want to tip in cash as I go on the cruise. That's fine. That's definitely yep. your prerogative. But what they're going to do is they're going to charge you anyway. anyway. <laughs> because here's the thing. They don't know that you're tipping along the way in cash. Right. So what do you have to do? When they charge them, because they're going to charge everybody at the same time. Yes. Everybody's going to have that same sticker shock. Like, oh, what's, what's this charge? <laughs> and everybody's going to run to guest services. Mm -hmm. They're either want to take them off or they want to adjust them. That's why I always say go ahead and do it and pre 
pay them. Yeah, because the, the prepaid gratuities covers the, the tips for your room stewardess, for the wait staff in the dining room, the bus person in the dining room, as well as the support staff that's behind the scenes, making sure you have an awesome cruise, man. So why not give them, get, you know, look out for them, man? You see what I'm saying? So yeah. Please don't skip out on prepaid gratuities. Mm -hmm. The ninth thing as a first time cruiser, what you need to know is don't double tip at the bar unless you want to. But we wanna make you aware that for every drink that you buy, that the gratuity, the 18% gratuities is already included in that. that so you don't have to put nothing down on the other line unless you want to. Now, let me give you a little hint, hint. If you look out for them and put a good little amount in that little section, Oh, they will keep the drinks coming. That's just a little inside secret for the first time cruisers. Mm -hmm. They will look out for you. But yeah, you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, but you don't have to though. You don't have to. All right, the 10th thing is a hot topic. People yeah. ask me all the time, well, Lynette, how much money should I consider bringing in cash? And of course, I always stick with my rule of thumb. I say $500. That yeah. does not mean you're right. going to spend $500 in port, but it is a good little cushion to have. I don't recommend taking all of that money in port no. with you. Uh -uh. So divide it up. Like me and my husband will keep a certain amount on each of us and the other money will be in the safe and whatnot. Most of the time we bring that money back home anyway. Yeah, right, we do. <laughs> all right, the 11th thing that a first time cruiser needs to know and first time cruisers always ask is the cheers package worth it. So just in case you don't know what the cheers package is and what it consists of, it actually allows you to get up to 15 drinks per day per person. Because if one person buys the cheers package, both adults, well, all the adults in the room will have to buy it. I'm sorry, yeah, I know. We, I hate that we think it's very unfair, but hey, they that's the way they do it. So it is what it is, Mike. Also, any beverages outside of alcohol is also included, like your sodas, special the the, the good waters in the bottles, mm -hmm. the um the coffee shops, all that's included in the Cheers package as well. You also can get the spike coffees also in the cafe, but they will count towards those 15 drinks as well. So keep that in mind. So online, there's a lot of videos already going through this with the numbers and everything, but I'm just going to just simplify it for you. If you're not a drinker, it's not for you. It's, it's straight for you. If you're not a drinker, don't even worry about it because you're definitely going to overspend. The next part, if you are a drinker, you got to ask yourself, are you willing to pay the price of the Cheers package? So give you an example. So on a five-day cruise, you're going to spend about $800. On a, on a seven day cruise, you're gonna spend about 1100. And also the, those prices that I just quoted, that's for a double occupancy. So that's for two people. So you gotta ask yourself, does alcohol mean that much to you to spend that much? And if it don't, don't do it. But if it do, do it. Not only do you ask yourself, is it valuable to you? But you gotta also ask yourself that after I get off that ship mm -hmm. and get back home, Am I gonna have buyer's remorse be like, did I just spend yeah. $800 or $1,100 That's on lot. alcohol? Like, I love alcohol, but I don't love alcohol that much. So you gotta just basically check your peace of mind. Right. Do you have a peace of mind spending that much money on alcohol? And that will answer your question on whether the drink package is for you. Right. And also, we're gonna also in, in the pinned comments in the description, we're gonna leave a link to our website and we got everything that's included in the, in the Cheers package yeah. so you have everything you need to know. All right, man, if you're enjoying this video, go ahead and smash that like button so more first-time cruisers, man, can see this video. Hey. All right, the 12th thing is I am an advocate for pre-purchasing everything. everything that you can think of because what it does, it, it gives you a sense of being in an all-inclusive. So anything that you feel like you're going to need, your Wi-Fi packages. If you want to do specialty dining, go ahead and do that. You especially need to do that because they do book, book up, up quick. Fast. Also, your excursions, go ahead because they, the popular ones, you'll they see go, them. Yeah. You'll be talking to your family, your friends, and next thing you know, none of y'all are going right. because it'll sold out. <laughs> um, your waters. And down below, we're gonna have a link where you can go directly to Carnival's Fun Shop and you'll be able to get a sense of what everything is and how much the things on there cost. So we're gonna put that below. Don't don't forget, don't forget. All right, where is it? 
I heard you. All right, the third thing, thing a first time cruiser needs to know, I know you've been online doing a whole lot of research and I know you heard of peer runners. <laughs> Those people who not looking at their watch and not coming back to the ship on time. So embed this in your head, that rhymes. <laughs> An hour before your departure time, because if not, you gonna be one of those peer runners on YouTube next. <laughs> Cause I'm gonna be recording. <laughs> and also, um, to help you out in port, sometimes the time on the ship, it'll be different than the time that's in port. So make sure that your time matches the ship, ship time. time. Please, please. The 14th thing, once you get on board, please. Yeah, my. Put your phone in airplane mode. mode. Because what we don't want to do is you get home and you see that your phone has been roaming the entire time you've been at sea. And don't nobody got time for the bill that's <laughs> yeah. going to come because of that. Also, keep in mind, this is something that most people ask me all the time. The Carnival Hub app does not work on Wi-Fi that you have to buy. Right. And it does work with your phone being in airplane mode. So again, the Carnival Hub app does work because they will give you ship access to use that app only, only without the Wi-Fi yeah. package. Another <laughs> thing about the Carnival Hub app, until you get on board, that app is basically useless. It right. really, they load everything onto there and it's basically to be used on board. Right now, the only thing it's really good for is a cruise countdown. Yeah, if you man. Ask me. Yeah. They do have a good FAQ section in there. So go ahead and download the app. You should have did that by now and get familiar with it, but it gets good when you're on board. Yeah. Just know that. So some of the things that will be on the Carnival Hub at one right now, because we're in Atlanta, <clears throat> they're doing the mustard drill on the Carnival Hub app where you yes. can go ahead and attest to it and check in at your mustard station. And we well, hope they're gonna keep that too. Yes. I hope what so. is a mustard station or mustard drill? I know somebody's gonna ask and it's it's okay. Yeah. It's foreign. Right. <laughs> it's basically the safety briefing. Yes. So if anything were to happen on board, you know exactly where to go to get into your lifeboat. Yes. So that you can get back to land safely. Exactly. That's what a mustard drill and a mustard station is. Yes. So, okay, they have that on the Carnival Hub app right now. Also, all of the daily activities yes. will be on there. You also can schedule your dining. So you know that, oh, I'm getting hungry. I'm about to eat in an hour. You can go ahead and check in on your phone in the dining room. Now, for instance, you have some people with you and your bookings are linked together. And you'd be like, well, I want to eat with Bob and Susie and I want them to know that at seven <laughs> o'clock, I'm going to the dining room. You can actually select them and on their Carnival Hub app, it'll let you let them know that, hey, she wants to go eat dinner with you at seven yep. o'clock because she going to the day go dining yep. room. <laughs> so yes, all of the activities that will be on the ship that day is on the app. It is basically yep. your compass for the ship. All right, the 15th thing that a first time cruiser needs to know is that you don't have to do everything that's on this mm -hmm. ship because let me tell you, you're gonna end up weighing it's yourself fine. out. So just like the queen said, every single day, they're gonna have all the activities that you can participate on the ship. So each day you get up, look and see what's on there and just schedule some stuff that you see that you're interested in and just do those things. But right. don't feel like you gotta do everything because after all, you on vacation to relax, man. That's it. Don't forget that. Don't forget your R&R. &R. Have fun, but don't forget your R&R. &R. And the beauty of it is, like you said, you can schedule, um, just click on activities that you're interested in, and the Carnival Hub app will keep you reminded yeah. so you know that that's coming up. Right. And I really love that. Yeah, that is dope. You'll get caught up in something else and be like, dang, I missed the Love and Marriage show. And it'll tell you Love and Marriage show starts in 15 minutes. Yep. So I love that. Yeah. The 16th thing, when you're leaving from a port that's not in the same state as you, or it could be the same state, but it is a significant distance away from your home, go ahead and fly in a day early or go ahead and drive in a day early. Yes. Anything can happen. Mm -hmm. I said that there are two things in this life that won't wait for you. Death, <laughs> a cruise ship, and a flight. <laughs> they not gonna wait for you. Right. <laughs> <laughs>
We need you to get that <laughs> right. <laughs> Two of them we can help. <laughs> but that third one, yeah. Now that first one, we can't help, but that them two other ones, we can get there on time. Yeah. <laughs> Say it with me. Come in a day earlier. Yes. The 17th thing you need to know as a first time cruiser, and we've stated this in several videos, is please join the Facebook groups. The first one that you should join is the one for your sailing. So you basically go on Facebook, type in your ship and your sailing date, and it should pop up if somebody's already started the group for it. For example, in the search field, you would type Carnival Mardi Gras, June the 6th, 2022. And it should pop and right it should up. pop right up and then what else he was going to do just in case that's not available we're going to list some facebook groups in the pinned comments and in the description field so you can go and check them out and just join and have yourself a ball yes all right number 18 just know that on a cruise there's going to be at least one elegant night yes everybody asks do i have to go to elegant night i say as a first time cruiser i always yeah. will advise you to do it at least once but you don't have to but you don't have to nah, don't have but to. it's cute to get yeah man it's just it just makes you a part of the cruising lifestyle for me we like to do it because we like to dress up right i don't know why but yeah, it's your <laughs> opportunity to be bad and bougie why not yeah so on a three to five day sailing you will have one elegant night mm -hmm. six plus you're going to have two so if you book a seven night cruise just know you gonna have to bring two outfits. Yeah, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> nah, you don't have to, but it's nice to just go ahead and get dressed up. But if you decide you're gonna go to the dining room that night, make sure that you're dressed at least where you can blend in. You don't have to do the whole ball gown and none and of that tuxedo stuff. And all yeah, that, but yeah. make sure you just got a nice button down on a sundress or yeah. a romper or something like that. You know, just try to leave the jeans and the shorts and stuff. Fun them all the days. Right, exactly. <laughs> but if you come in there with that on, they, they, they ain't going to stop you. Not yeah, they'll all. let you right on in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, the 19th thing that you need to know is, and I'm going to stress this, after you book your cruise or after you book your cruise with a travel agent, stay on top of your emails because within 48 hours, they're going to send you the health addict station that you have to acknowledge. Because if you do not do that, they're going to cancel your booking. Yeah, they will warn you. Yes. And they will keep warning you. But that basically lets them know whether or not, okay, you're vaccinated. Yeah. You are willing to sail with the protocols they have in place. Yes. And they will not let anyone move forward without you attesting to it. Yes. So, so stay on top of your Yeah, emails. please do that. And then you might say, well, it's been 48 hours. I haven't seen anything. Reach back out to Carnival to make sure you're in good standings or reach out to your travel agent. Sometimes as a travel agent, they will allow us to attest on your behalf based off of the information we have. Sometimes they don't. It's right. just a luck of the draw. So if you are not sure, reach out to somebody. Your travel agent can definitely tell you whether or not it's due or anything that needs to be taken care of. Call Carnival, they can do the same thing. The 20th thing that we want to drive home is, and this is a question that I get, and I always yeah. say, everybody jumping the gun. We ready to get on board right yeah. now. I get it. You're excited. <laughs> but what time do I board the ship? What time do I board the ship? This is how it works. If you booked your cruise right now for next year, you're not going to get a check-in time until two weeks before your cruise what happens is like we said my husband told you stay on top of your emails yes you will get an email to let you know it's check-in time yeah basically what that means is it's time for you to select your boarding slot they go in hour increments so you can pick 10 o'clock all the way down to whenever you want to arrive so there's no set time for you to arrive you have to do it and select it yourself but that does not become available until two weeks before you sail. Yes. Also, if you're at that point now where you're checking in and they're asking you all of those questions, yeah. those questions are, are you ready to set up your onboard account? I suggest you set it up right there unless you're using cash. Of course, you have to take care of that on board, but set that up. They're going to ask you a whole bunch of pre-cruise questions. What are you checking in with? If you're checking in with your birth certificate, they're gonna need that information. If you're going to check in with your passport, you have to enter that information. Yes. So be document ready when you check in as well. Also, it's gonna, it's going to ask you your betting preference. Yeah. If your travel agent hasn't set that up for you, 
it'll ask you or just verify twin beds or king beds move forward it's going to ask you for your emergency contact, contact information yes. now me <clears throat> i try to skip it because <laughs> honestly most people that <laughs> is my emergency contact, contact is with me <laughs> they with me <laughs> it would allow you to skip it but here's the thing they are waiting for you to come back and fill it out so you have to fill that information out in its entirety Tiredy. here what i say if you skip it you still need to fill it out so you might as well fill it out right now right. Because you're not going to be able to get your boarding pass exactly. without completing it in its entirety. Do not skip any of those questions. Just know. As a travel agent, that's a question I get. I can't print my boarding pass. What did you skip? Yep. Well, I don't have my uh, emergency contact. Put Donald Duck. <laughs> yeah. Or Goofy. Or Goofy. <laughs> but you're going to have to put somebody okay. there. Because it's not going to give you your boarding pass until you do so. Right. All right, if y'all enjoyed this video, you gonna wanna check out this video right here on the 13 things to avoid on your first carnival cruise. And we are gonna catch you in the next video. Peace.